Hebrews chapter 4 and 12 tells us that the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is powerful, guys. You know, people open it up and they just see black and white. They see some words or they may see black and red. Hmm. But the condition of your heart and whether your obedience to God or not is going to open up your eyes to what's truly there. Yes, you may see the word on paper, but your willingness to be obedient, your willingness to know God is what's going to open up to you, is going to allow your mind and your eyes to be opened up to see truth in the word of God. What you find people do, they use to just look at the words on the page. And then sometimes because their heart is a little divided and it's not one with God. This is how you find people can split up the word of God. This is how you find a person that's divided in their spirit, a double-minded man. They'll tell you the word of God is quick. It's powerful. It's all truth, but except this part, this part of the word is relevant, but that part is not relevant. They will mix and match, cut and paste, pixel out, you know, and blur out what they want to. And they will focus on little bits and pieces of the Bible. This is a deceiving individual, deceiving spirit. They are blind. Never follow such individuals. Every bit of the word of God has relevance. Even the parts of the word that, okay, we no longer need to bring, we no longer need to go and sacrifice an animal, you know, like they did back in the old days. But even those teachings are relevant. It, it holds power and truth. The old and the new are all one that leads us to the final part of the Bible revelation to the promise that we will receive if we endure. So one of the things you have to realize is that the Bible just gives us snapshots and snippets of things that occurred. There's not every bit of every moment that occurred with any of the individuals in the Bible to include all the occurrences of Jesus in there. So if you read Genesis chapter one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the second day, Adam was there. And then the, in the, I'm sorry. And then the second chapter, Adam is there. And then he's naming all the animals. And then the third chapter, Eve is messing up. And then they're leaving the garden. It does. There's a lot of things that happen in between all of that. There's certain parts of the word of God that is revealed by God to the men the men that wrote the Bible, they get revelation, but people cannot really believe. I say in Matthew, Matthew chapter one, it was a genealogy of Jesus. And then the, I believe chapter two is talking about he was his birth and then he was born in chapter two. And then in chapter three, he's grown and getting baptized. There's a lot that happens between that. Now, who fills those blanks? The Holy Spirit through your time in prayer in your time in 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 fellowship with the Holy Spirit, this is how you're going to learn things. There's a lot of people that's doing a lot of damage to people because they just they look at the Word of God, which is truth, but because their heart is not. Sometimes their heart is bound by tradition. Their heart can be bound, and their their heart can be where. It's not falling on good ground. Their heart is not good ground. They're not in a place to learn and to be obedient to the Lord. They're a person, they're full of the world. So when they're reading the word of God, what happened? What does it say that happens when the seed, the word goes out? If it's going to get choked off by thistles and thorns, because that's what's in the heart. So they can't get it. Then there's other parts of the word where it says, oh, you're reading the word of God, but then it's on stony ground. So then you read it, you're excited, but then guess what? Because your heart is not really right. When the word goes in, you're excited, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the first trial and tribulation that come around, it, you burn out. It's all about your heart, right? The word's authenticity, no doubt, is there. But depending on who is opening up the word, depending on the intents of their heart, is going to be based, and that's going to determine what's going to be revealed. What's in between? What's all? What's happened all between the chapters that we read? What happened truly between from the time, from, from the time of the Jesus, I'm sorry, from the time of the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, what happened between verse one and verse two, those things you're not going to, I'm sorry, what happens between chapter one and chapter two, that's not written there. Those things are only going to be given to you and I by revelation through the Holy Spirit. Now, please 
Don't even discount yourself and start to say, oh, God ain't talking to me like that. You know, I'm yeah, like that. No, I'm not special. I just discipline myself. I'm like, yo, I'm going to heaven. I'm not missing it. I'm not missing it for nobody. And I'm just like, it's not that I don't get tired some days and I don't feel like it. Even if I'm dragging myself in it, even if I'm just laying back, I'm like, Lord, I want to know you. And once you have that determination in your heart and you want to learn, the Holy Spirit will reveal things to you guys. This is how a lot of people's getting messed up. That's how a lot of people's jacking people up with the word of God because they just, I oh, just say this. <laughs> Yay. It says a lot more than that. But if you approach the word with hatred and malice in your heart, listen, here's another thing I want to tell you about. Those of you, you are unwilling for, unwilling to forgive folks. You can forget about getting life out of the word. The word of God says, if you don't forgive, the Lord is not going to forgive you. So a lot of you that's been holding on forgiveness against people and you won't forgive people when they come to you and ask you for, forgi for forgiveness, God hasn't forgiven you for any of your sins from the time you've been holding the grudge. So if you had the grudge back in 1977 when you were wearing bell bottoms and you hate that man since that time or that woman or those people, you're reading the Bible, you're getting nothing out of that. Your revelation is coming from a deceiving and dark spirit because you've not been forgiven for your sins. That's what the Bible says. Yes, yeah, so when you see those malicious Christians out there, that's really mean and they they speak in God's word, not stern. There are times where God is going to have his 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 children, his those who is using to speak, to speak stern. Okay, because it happens, but you find people that's just vicious and malicious and evil. A lot of times you find these type of people, they have in their hearts, there's people that they still have not forgiven. They People that ask for forgiveness, they won't. And if they have, they have them on this regiment, their own little regiment that leads possibly to forgiveness. They're very hardened in their heart and really wicked. And a lot of times behind closed doors, they are getting very familiar with themselves. People that have issues with masturbation and stuff like that. Some, some, hold up. Let me, let me, let me scale back. People that's willfully just masturbating and then they're still trying to teach people and they still in the, they, they're religious on top of it. Cause some people, they do struggle with masturbation and sexual sin and you really want to overcome. This is not for you. You're really trying to overcome and you're, you're holding fast to God for it. But there are people that they just do that. They think it's normal. They're not even trying. And then on top of that, they are very religious. I'm trying to tell you these type of people that's really religious. What's religious? Religious does not mean that you believe in God and you want to serve God. No, religious people, they use the law to kill people and to whip them and they don't live by it. Like the Pharisees. So to get back on point here, I'm trying to say individuals like that, you're not going to get revelation from the word of God. No matter, no matter how much revelation you think you're getting, God is not talking to you because he has not forgiven you for any of your sins because you haven't forgiven someone who you should have forgiven and who asks for forgiveness. Okay. So in order to get revelation, as I said, What's between those chapters? What happened between chapter one of Genesis and chapter two? What happened between chapter two and chapter three? These things will, re will be revealed to you by the Holy Spirit. And the way you're going to get these revelations throughout the whole Bible and in the word of God is simply by being willing to go before the Lord daily in prayer. Prayer is simply a conversation honesty in your heart and really being willing to follow Christ. When you make your mistakes, you quickly repent and go back to him and he will show you how you made that mistake and you, you avoid and circumvent and overcome. So you're no longer going through the same sins over and over again. God wants to teach us. God enjoys us. God wants us to come into his presence he wants us to seek him out and he has many things to teach us and to show us. So you just be willing to do that, my brothers and sisters. And I'm here to tell you, he will reveal wonderful and, and mysterious things in the word of God. That's going to be edification, not only to yourself, but you'll be able to help others. All right, guys. Peace out.